We have a 2006 Honda Ridgeline. Today we're going to go under the hood and change out the spark plugs. These spark plugs are in desperate need of changing. There's three in the front and three in the back. I'm going to go through all the tools, all of the supplies you need, and the know-how to get this project done. Uh, please stick around for the whole thing to see exactly how I do this. Here are the tools and supplies you're going to need for this project. Uh, you may want a step ladder or something to get up, especially get to the back side. I like to wear gloves, paper towels. Um, you can use dielectric grease and anti-seize. I've read a couple of varying reports on what to do and what not to do. It does tell you in the service notes to use that. You're going to need six uh, spark plugs and the numbers are IZFRAK-11 or SKJ16DR-M11. I am going with the NK, NGKs. Um, you're going to want some kind of torquing device, whatever you want to use on that. There's a couple of torque specifications, a ratchet. I like to use a six inch extension that allows it to wobble on the end a little bit. It just helps get in there a little easier. This is a 5 8 Craftsman spark plug. You are going to need a six millimeter um, Allen wrench. And so this is really important. Just buy a set. They're not that expensive. A lot of the Hondas use uh, those and a flathead screwdriver. Um, I'll go over all the different techniques that I've learned over the years to make this uh, really done well. Again, the dielectric grease and the anti-seize lubricant kind of varying reports. Um, one of the reports on the NGK website says not to use it at all. The service notes do say to put a little bit of anti-seize lubricant on the threads right here. Don't need to worry about the, the top of the plug with the dielectric grease. Again, do what you feel is right. Um, I'm just here to help. And so hopefully that information is helpful you, to you as well. So the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and pop your hood and it's this little thing right here. Once you've popped your hood, you can go ahead and shut your door. Walk around to the front. Go ahead and pop it up. It's just to the left of center. It goes straight up and you're going to take your support stand. Put it right there and we're going to be working right in the center right here to get this plastic cover off you're going to use a flathead screwdriver and turn it one quarter turn counterclockwise and that will let you lift up there are nothing there's nothing in the back really holding on except gravity and you can just go ahead and put that to the side you can take these off if you would like to push them in on the side and that gets the wires off it does make it a little more convenient and so it has a little push tab the front side is very easy to do and I just try to get these kind of up out of the way um, the back side is much less visible and much more difficult you're gonna take that six millimeter and you need to break each one of them. I have seen people use an Allen wrench. I think this is much easier than an Allen wrench. After you've broke them, uh, you normally can just spin them out by hand, which is a little easier to do. So now all three of those are broken. are kind of long threads so it does take a few seconds for each one of them and I do like to put the coil packs back in the exact same order that I pulled them out I do think that's important to do so as you pull them out you just set them this vehicle has about 225,000 miles on it 
and I believe these are all the original coil packs and these things should last a very long time unless you get a lot of oil in them uh, from a bad seal and you can kind of inspect them as well so when you do a a valve cover change which I'm going to do that seal is what I'm going to do later today um, sometimes you do get some oil back down in there because there are little seals on each one of those you want to try to avoid that go and take that 5 8 on that 6 inch with a little bit of wobble on it that will help us get down and in these locations Again, the front side, I think, is the easier side. Once you've gone ahead and broke that, you should be able to spin it out by hand. And you can kind of feel it click in to place um, with these spark plug. There it goes. And this one was kind of a cheaper spark plug. I bought the lot better ones. These are auto light. These are probably not what should have been gone in there. Um, and so the new ones will work much better. You can just pitch these. For this second one, I like to put it in through where the fan blade goes. Make sure, make sure. Hopefully you're smart enough not to turn the car on like this. Um, but you don't want to get your hand caught off, cut off by a fan blade. So do be very careful. Keys out of the ignition. Just be smart about it. Once you've turned it a couple of times, you should be able to get the rest by hand. one's a little more tough so I am going to get this back on give it a couple more cranks and then finish by hand there it goes and you can tell these ones were pretty shot and there's only about 50,000 miles on these um, I just noticed they just didn't seem like they were working how I wanted them to, so good time to change them out. are really stuck in there normally I can get them all out by hand but sometimes they're there it goes so just take your time there's no rush to this process now all three of those are out go ahead and grab the new ones I know some places said not to use anti-seize. I am just gonna put just a little teeny tiny bit on it. Um, I'd rather be safe than sorry with these plugs. The other thing is these are pre-gapped. And in fact, 
do your best not to ever have to gap these because you don't really want to. And they're smart, they put a little cover on it so if it does get dropped in the box, which I have had before where they get dropped, um, you don't wanna deal with that situation. And these things really, you don't want to try to gap them. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back down in there. And I'm just gonna take just a touch and put it on there. Sorry, that wasn't in camera view very well. I'm gonna take a little bit of paper towel and wipe the extra off. <coughs> so once I have that, I'm just gonna take a little paper towel and just wipe any of the access off just a little bit. But I do think that will help. I know you get varying reports from varying different places, so you have to do what you think is right. Then you can go ahead and put this down in here and begin to turn to the right. Go until you can't turn it with your hand anymore. So we're gonna look for 13 foot pounds of torque. So this one's pretty easy, just keep spinning it. Right there is 13, you got the 10 plus the 3, 13. Make sure that bottom nut is tight afterwards. Sorry, I kind of have to hold it because I do want it centered. Till you hear it click and you probably will have to pull it off each time and you can grab the next one and just keep doing the same for all three up front I do really like that it comes with these little paper inserts that really is helpful same thing just a little bit of anti seize on there. Really try your best not to get it anywhere near the sensor where it would come out and spark. Then again, I'm just going to kind of wipe it off as well. This one has to go into that fan blade, remember? You want to make sure you don't drop it down into the cylinder. That would be really bad news. Go ahead and tighten to hand tight. We're doing 13 foot pounds again. There it was. Go ahead and do the last one for the front. Put it right down on there. Go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize on there. And I am gonna wipe it off again, just to make sure we don't get any where the spark would go. and spin it down to hand tight. Thirteen foot pounds again. There it was. So go ahead and take your coil pack. 
put them in the same order. Put the connector back on for the wire. For this one, it's 8.7, which is kind of hard to do on here, but we'll try our best. It's pretty close to 8.7 foot-pounds. I like to go ahead and put them in by hand, each one of these little Allen wrench bolts. If I know the specs, I do re really try to put it as close to those as possible. I know a lot of people would just put these to hand tight, but if you have it, go ahead and do it. It's worth it. It's worth the energy and the effort. And you don't over tighten something that's not supposed to be super tight, which if you've ever done that and cross threaded or anything like that, you're going to hate life. tends to be an expensive repair. So again, 8.7. on that one so that right there that front whole side is done I always like to just check all the wires make sure I got that in adequately now we're gonna move to the back side which I think is the harder side and it's gonna be harder to show you but I'm gonna to try to walk you through it in the same way I walked you through the front side So I believe this is the best angle I'm gonna be able to give you with my camera we have one two three packs they're almost identical to the opposite side, but not exactly. And so you just kind of got a feel for where the bolt is at, that Allen wrench bolt. And so th it is, the first one is just to the right of it if you're looking down on top of it. And once you go ahead and crack that, you should be able to spin it out Again, this is not a great camera angle. You probably could take this shroud off uh, that the camera is kind of resting against to give yourself a little bit better angle, but you just kind of got to use that step ladder and kind of lean in up on top of the vehicle. And then the second one, you can see the bolt. The first one, you could not. And once you get it broke, just go ahead and spin it out with your hand. Again, this is the same setup as the front side. It's just backwards and very not visible. You just got to kind of trust yourself. That's why doing the front is sometimes really helpful. And the third one, you can see the bolt. Again, I'm up on that step ladder, which is giving me visibility a little bit. Okay, all three of those are out. Go ahead and remove your tool. And we'll go ahead and pull out the coil packs. We will need to remove the wire. Same concept as the front. You're just pulling that little tab. 
and then you'll pull that straight out. And again, I like to set those in order. The wire tabs are on the opposite side, so they are on this side, uh, then you can pull out the coil pack, hopefully. And if you need a break, because this is a weird angle, take your time, take a break, there it goes. No rush to this, just take your time, you'll get it. I will say that was much more difficult than the front side and you have this rubber hose right here that really gets in the way on this last one the furthest one to the right so do take your time pulling that out and I'm sure that hose will get back in our way when we're trying to do the rest of it so we can go ahead and grab our 5 8 socket that is specially made for spark plugs And go ahead and find the hole. And there's a lot in your way on the back side. There it goes. Make sure that's seated properly. And then we'll go ahead and break it. And I'm probably gonna do most of this not by hand on this one because it will be just kind of a weird angle and just leave the last part for by hand. Nope, didn't get it. Probably one or two more turns. It's close. See, told you, one or two more turns was all I needed. So now that we got one, we'll go into the second one. Same concept, go ahead and seat that. There is a lot of uh, metal up on top where your forearms are sitting. You can put a towel down, like a uh, old bath towel or something like that if you're worried about scratching up your arms. There's a couple pieces that kind of hurt. And I apologize for the bad camera angle. There's just not much more I can do. There's not much you can see in here. And the camera angle will be kind of similar to what you'll actually be seeing as well. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. There's the second one. And let's go tackle this third one. I just have a feeling this one's gonna be the, the more challenging one. Okay, if you put it underneath this one and be between these two and kind of push it back off to the right, I was able to get it in there. Not easily, but it worked. 
And this six inch extension is exactly what you need with that little bit of a swivel on the end of it. That really does help. It just makes it a lot easier to finagle it in where it needs to go while still keeping it straight. I'm guessing you could put a swivel on the end here, but then you're gonna add another inch and then you'd be hitting the pipe here or more, some of them are bigger than an inch. tell if I have it or not. Yep. So there you go, there's your last one. So same concept, we're gonna go ahead and pull it, take it out. Go ahead and seat it on there. And then I will take just a touch of anti-seize. Same thing with the paper towel. Go ahead and make sure you don't have any on there where it's going to connect. And then with this, I like to go ahead and kind of put my finger in the hole to make sure I know on the opposite hand because you don't want to ding those up putting them in and then go ahead and tighten it down by hand as much as you can. And then remember it's that 13 foot pounds of torque. And this is gonna be very hard to do because of how long this torque stick is. Yeah, this torque wrench is just, just large. So this may not work super well, but we're gonna try our best. And if you need to reposition, take your time, reposition, do what you need. Because there's a lot on this back side. Sorry you're not getting the best camera angle, but I just got to do it to make it happen. getting close because it's getting tighter. There it was. This one's not super loud, which is okay, but uh, some of them make a lot more noise than this torque stick does, or torque wrench, whatever you want to call it. Okay, number one done. Go ahead and put in the next one. Same concept that we've done for the other four, for number five. Just a little bit of anti-seize on it. We go ahead and take paper towel and rub any of the excess off. This one should be the easiest of all three I say that and I'll probably drop something because you can kind of see exactly where it needs to go. The last one's going to be the most difficult, as always. Okay, did that as much by hand as I could.
There it goes. to the last one. Go ahead and put it in. Seat it properly. Put a little bit of anti-seize on there. Then we'll wipe the excess off. This one was the more difficult one, so we'll try our best to get it back to where what we kind of did before. There it goes, right in there. Go ahead and spin it down by hand. Work it down. There it was. So I think the hardest part is done now. So let's go ahead and get that up. We'll go ahead and set this back down to 8.7. So that's set for doing that last Allen wrench bolt. Put these back in the same order. connect them in properly. There's a little bit of a click sound when done properly. And remember this one was the hard one as well, so we'll try to kind of do what we did for everything else and there it goes. It's a little easier to connect the wires before you put the bolts on. The other thing I would say with putting these little bolts on, um, try your best to, to line up the hole so you don't end up dropping one of these down and then make sure it's actually spinning on there before you let go of them, which this one did really good the first time. Once we get all three on, I'll go ahead and tighten them down to specs.
also by plugging in the wire they kind of do sit almost exactly where they're supposed to by having that wire plugged in so that's also another benefit of doing it and you can kind of pull them out of the socket just a touch so this coil packs just fit right where they're supposed to So we've already torqued it to or set the torque to what it needs to be. And we'll just go ahead and find the little bolts and torque each of them down. So go ahead and got your tower stick all set up. Go ahead, nope. So now that you have this set, you go ahead and put it on the bolt head, the Allen wrench. There it is. There it is. Oh, and sometimes these things do get stuck on there. Be careful not to lose the end down into the engine bay. That can be a bear to try to get back out. Okay. All of those are done. So one last step is you go ahead and put your plastic cover back on. This sometimes can be tricky to get it perfectly lined up since you do only have three bolts, well, plastic screws in the front. I'm sure some mechanics can get them on much faster, but sometimes I struggle. So then you just go ahead and turn one quarter turn to the right to tighten them down. And that is done. All your spark plugs have been changed. You can go ahead and start up your car, make sure it sounds right, and go ahead and drive around. Fire it up just how it's supposed to. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching how to change out your spark plugs on the front side and on the back side of this Honda 3.5 VTEC Honda Ridge line. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Um, there's a bunch of links uh, in the description that you can get all the tools and all the parts. If you just make sure you subscribe and thank you guys so much for watching.